This is the time that we read from the Bible. You may choose to follow along in a few Bible, or you can just listen for the Word of God. Our scripture reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 1 and verses 4 through 14. You can find this reading on page 1221 of your Pew Bible. Listen now for the Word of God. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may be your sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for it's in its welfare that you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's seventy years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. We will now quietly listen to Pastor Megan.
See, this passage in Jeremiah that, that Ms. Jen just read for us doesn't just start where she started reading, right? It starts with the story of these people. So Jeremiah is talking to people who are living in exile. And what that means is that the country of Babylon had come to the country of Israel and they had defeated their government and taken away some of the people who lived there to come back and live in their country with them. And these people saw their homes and their businesses and their lives just destroyed and then they left. They had lost so many things that they wondered kind of what they did wrong that might have made that happen. You know when something goes wrong we kind of think, oh maybe if I had just done this differently or if we could have done that differently. But none of their regrets or their memories could change the past. So here they were taken out of their home in Israel and living in Babylon. But they weren't really prisoners as much as just kind of relocated. So they had a place to live. They had homes to live in. They had land to live on. But none of those things really mattered, right? They missed where they had been. So knowing all this background, I asked our group of 5th through 7th graders, what do you think Jeremiah is trying to tell his people? What's he saying here? So we started right in the text, of course. Jeremiah is reminding them that there is hope, that they do have a future. And he wants them to know that something better is coming that will mean real, concrete changes in their lives. Our conversation then turned to our own lives. Uh, what's your hope for the future, I asked. And let me tell you, there are some really awesome futures ahead in this church. Um, soccer players, lawyers, fashion designers, FBI agents, Harvard graduated doctors who may go on to become president. Uh, those are just a few of the hopes that we have for our lives, and that's a lot of hope. It was so fun to hear from these folks what they wanted for their lives. For them, Jeremiah's words make them think of graduating, of moving on in their school lives. It reminded them that, that anything can happen at any time, but that God has a plan for all of it. And they told me that that makes them feel less pressure to figure out exactly what's going to happen next, that God would lead them. And Jeremiah's words remind us that God is at work all the time and will be in the future building God's own kingdom here on earth. Now I know it's one thing to think about the future when you're 10 or 11 or 12 or 20 or 30 for that matter, but what about later in life, right? And I asked our group that question too. I said, what do you think the passage has to say to grown-ups in our church, right? To people who feel like but they didn't get to become the things that they dreamed of, or whose lives took different directions than they thought they would. Well, our young people were adamant. Jeremiah's words about a hopeful future are for all of us. Jeremiah calls us to never give up hope, because maybe what you originally wanted isn't as good as what God is going to bring you to. Our group also decided that Jeremiah's hope means that we can try new things. Or we can just go with the flow, following God to new places where we are led. Places we maybe never dreamed about before. If that all still feels a little fantastical, just take another look at Jeremiah 29. His words to the people don't come out of nowhere. They're part of an instruction on what God is calling them to do now that they find themselves just hopeless and looking toward the past. The things God calls them to are not grandiose or extraordinary, they're super duper ordinary. The most ordinary things of all, to build houses and live in them, to plant gardens and eat what they produce, to let the children get married and start having families of their own, to work for the welfare of the city where they find themselves. They don't even have to graduate from Harvard or become ballerinas to live out God's dreams for them. Their hope and their future begin just where they are. Today, in a few minutes, we will confirm Sierra and Edwin. Confirmation is um, sometimes thought of as another kind of graduation. Uh, a graduation out of Sunday school into the big church. Uh, it, at its worst, it's a graduation out of church. So that's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be uh, a beginning. <coughs> Right? of your participation in the larger church body. So the preparation for confirmation takes many forms and usually includes learning about the Bible, about the Presbyterian Church, and the five points of theology. 
This year, we didn't so much care if confirmation was a grandiose affirmation that you now know all the things, but instead we wanted it to be a foundation upon which a life of faith could begin. And so Bob and Sierra and Dave and Edwin met over the course of this year talking in real concrete terms about where they've been and what their faith means to them. And what's Um, they have worked so hard and they're just so full of hope and their own agency in a way that's so inspiring to me. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> both of our confirmants see the step today as just that a step with intention in the direction of their future. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, it's a simple commitment to keep going to keep looking for God in their lives, to keep growing into this church community, to begin to make their faith their own. No matter if we are 2 or 12 or 72, we can all join in their commitment today. No matter if we have a life full of hope and dreams ahead of us or feel like we've already let those go, our kids are right. God is not done with any of us yet. So let's listen to Jeremiah's words of hope and a future and begin to live a hope that is grounded in the present and the everydayness of our lives, trusting that God indeed has good plans for us. Amen. So at this time, I'd like to invite just a whole lot of people up. Okay. We need David. He's not here. We've got it. Okay. So...
of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Edwin by word and deed, with love and prayer. If so, respond with, we do. We do. Let's pray. Eternal and gracious God, pour out your spirit upon us and upon this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. May the one who now passes through these waters be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom. Bind him to the household of faith, guard him from all evil, strengthen him to serve you with joy until the day you make all things new. To you be all praise, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ our Savior who lives and reigns forever. Amen. I would like to you to kneel here. This towel very close to you. <laughs> Lord, uphold Edwin by your Holy Spirit, give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. 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 Yeah, I'm going to do 
this, and then we'll get the guest for last. Sierra and Edwin, by professing your faith publicly, you have expressed your intention to grow in the covenant God made with you in your baptism. May the Spirit continue to strengthen and sustain you in worship and mission of the church. Amen. 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 All right, you can stand up now. We have <laughs> so we have presents for you. Um, first, I'm going to give these to you. These are prayer shawls that Tanya has made just for you to remember this day. Um, they are red for confirmation. Can you guys you, you it? It's good. Um, and then your sponsors have some gifts they're going to give to you.